All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, and just give me a second. I got a really. Wow. All right. Let's really quickly just set, it, set this thing up. A little bit. All right, this can work. All right, it's well enough. We're done. All right, we can start with our, what is this now, 11th stream or the 12th stream? I think this is the 12th stream that we're having. So we're gonna continue on uh, where we stopped in the previous uh, stream. We, in the previous one, we modeled some of the elements for the bottom. We also modeled in some of the, uh, well, some of the uh, tables, we basically just reuse some of the, the things that we had. Made some changes to the windows and doors and stuff like that. So, in this stream, we're going to continue with probably something for the top floor. And, oh, wait a second, I think the music is a bit too loud. All right, this is better, I think. Uh, how can you guys hear me? Is it okay? All right, let's see. Yep, everything's fine. All right, then. Let's just make sure everything is working just fine there. All right, that's cool. All right, now, a to everybody. Let's uh, start off with uh, getting some ideas as to what, what kind of a, a setup we want to have for the top. Now, what I had in mind for here is we want to have some sort of a door here. It is going to be for the entrance to the uh, balcony in here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my uh, tab for the walls, the bar walls. Yeah, so I can see what, what's what. And we also have the windows and doors, which is something that we're going to have to cut out eventually. But we know that we're going to have those nice windows in here. So they're going to let some light in. So in here, I do want to have a bit of a big door in here, probably something that can be opened up. But come to think of it, we can probably use something that we modeled in the first stream and that would be to use one of the main container side doors like for example the doors that we put in for the main container just all right and hide let's just see which oh well, let's uh, unhide the whole thing all right so now i'm gonna try and hide some of the things that I don't need. What is this? This is the placeholder for the bar. No, we don't no longer need that. It's fine. What I had in mind was to go in and use one of the full doors. It's not what I need. Oh, and by the way, just so you know what I'm doing, I'm actually just looking through my uh, layers because I know I have all of these in separate layers so this is what I had in mind uh, maybe even instead of going in and having to redo the whole uh, thing or make a different type of door I'm gonna just put in a sliding door that would save us quite a bit of uh, work let's just see how that thing would work in here so like so that that and that Go. There we go. So if we put it around here somewhere like that. Now what I can do is I can slide this thing open and closed. 
and just save myself the trouble of having to model something from scratch. Slightly scale it inwards so it gets to the point where it's just right. Like that. Alright, so now isolated with this one. And in here, let's go in and do some cutting with the poly. So one there, another one in there. One there and another one in here. All right, so select the polygons that are gonna be in here, oops. Is that all the polygon that we don't need? Yeah, select those, delete. And there we go. Now we have the leftovers on the top here and on the bottom. And the great thing about this is that uh, the way that we built, uh, we're missing one thing. All right, so you're gonna go slide down here. Rotate 180. That. So the great thing about uh, using these doors is that the sliding doors, so they can just move all the way back like this. And this door can be open or just uh, take it all the way back and just leave it closed. All right, so isolate. And now we have a lot more light that is gonna be going inside our second uh, roof, uh, second uh, floor, which is more or less what we wanted to have. This is okay from this side as well. I'm just trying to get my bearings on how this thing is looking so far. That's fine. We get that thing looking fine. All right. So let's just really, really quickly, let me check the size of our balcony. Like how many tables, like basically the one that we have in here, can we fit an instance? Put it up here. So it's one, two, three. So about six tables can be outside, which is not bad at all. I just remove. Oh. Let's not just make sure that we select the thing that we want to select. All right, so this one is gonna be a bit different because uh, like we said, we want to make this thing into some sort of a kitchen. So we're gonna have to model something for the kitchen in here. But for this second floor, we can make it into a fun room or we can make it into a, some sort of a dining room. We'll see. For now, the first thing I want to do is I want to put in some uh, guardrails for our second floor. So let's see if we can actually use some of the elements that we already modeled. So this is the second type fence, and this is the first one. Hmm. All right, so let's see like this. I know wall is fine. Physical prototype, please. All right, so this thing is okay. What about this one? Okay, so if it's. Why am I missing a piece in here? Oh, I'm not miss missing a piece. This is how this thing is made. All right, well then. Let's try it up with uh, this piece. Get this and drag it upwards. Try to put it in 
please. But then again, if I put it like this, there's going to be a bit of a problem because this will not really fit in the manner that this thing is uh, made out to be, like an article bar. So if you put this thing as the glass thing, that would be, mm, it would not fit. It would be weird. So I'm going to go back and return it to the position where it was. I'm gonna touch it like that. What about this one? Hey, Christian. So, even this thing, this thing is okay for the outside of the bar. Like we can uh, make this thing go around it and give it this uh, look. But for the top, let's just really quickly check and see um boat guardrails how these things are made well actually come to look at this you can actually see that this thing can be made out of a net or a wire for that matter so we can have some of the rails be something like this. So just a simple line going across. But then again, this is not a boat. This is supposed to be something that's gonna have some security for whoever might be on that balcony. Yeah, see, we, you, this is a weird thing. Just to boat, you can actually see fences like this as well, which is not a bad thing to have then. Hmm. So all these guardrails for the boats can actually work in our bar as well. But I'm trying to find something that will look cool as well. So yeah. Uh, based on everything that I'm seeing, that it means that whatever we have shouldn't be a problem to use in our scene. Hmm. All right, let's make it easy then. That's not over complicated, even with this stuff. Like the interior here is fine, but it's a 200,000 polygon element. So if I go ahead, well, first of all, I wanna do is this. I'm going to copy one version of this thing to the side as a copy, then open up my group and turn on off the turbo smooth. It's still 45,000 polygons. All right, all right, no problem. Then we, we're gonna do this the other way. Select everything isolated. All right, so make this thing into a plane like that now add in the segments let's try 50 by 50 60 like that we'll get it 180 Now, in here, edit poly, select all of these polygons, inset them for a very small amount of like 0 0.5. By polygon, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, that's fine. And delete the one in the middle. So how many is this? Oh, it's 12,000. <laughs> yeah, well. A lot of good that did us. Some shape shows, yeah. Uh, you 
it is sunshade sales. What is a sunshade sale? Ah, see, this is what I had in mind as well. When I said that I want to have something like a sail coming from the top that would cover up the, the balcony. Yeah, I had this thing in mind when uh, I started off with this thing for the second floor. So we can have something like this, 100%. Elio Yashi. Yeah, but Mark, this is uh, what I had in mind to do uh, anyways. So I'm just trying to like figure out something to, as a way to ask. You know what? I'm going to leave it like this for now. And now this is going to be about 10k. That's fine. Mainly because this thing. That's okay. Group and close and ungroup. Move it around, now group it again. That thing is grouped as well. Alright, so now these two I can and the isolate and move that thing up here. And since this thing and this side is going to be like that, 90, all the way here. What I need to do is open up this group in here, open up, select the top here and this part as well. What is this? Turbo smooth, no turbo smooth. Fine. So select that one. That one. So we don't get way too many polygons for nothing. And now just make sure that uh, whenever we're copying stuff like this, it's an instance. So we save up on uh, memory and resources. There you go. It's fine. Make this thing unique. All the way there. Same thing here. All right, awesome. So now what I want to do is select the close this thing as a group. I'll open up like this. Yeah, this thing has the turbo smooth on it as well. Why is this not selecting the all right now it's selected so we want this piece that piece that one once three versions third one is deleted and this one is going to have to be a bit modified. So oh, just make sure that this thing is unique because we're going to modify the, the geometry of this one. And if this stays as an actual uh, instance, it's going to mess with our previous elements. So I did poly on this, pull it backwards in there. Those two can move back. Like that. All right, and what I can do is just get this whole thing and move it all the way here. Like that. Same thing on this side.
Uh, you'll snap on that place. So the only thing that we're missing in here is one of these bowls on this side. And for instance, make sure it's in the right spot. Like that. Those three as a great item. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give them a more bare look. There we go. Group, close group, ungroup. There we go. I can no longer. I'm not longer seeing that thing. Just for a second now, let us see how all this uh, fences. Yeah, I think this is the right size for the fence. So we didn't screw up anything when we created that fence. Let's get a bit more on this side. And I might want to make this door a tad bit smaller. Time to take a look at this. It's really looking like it's way too at this that side. So scale it inwards. Maybe like something like this. Open it there. Hmm, this can work. But now we're missing a piece. The great thing about doing it this way is that I added it before I cut it. I made that clear distinction with the edit poly. So just remove the edit poly and redo that thing again. And now I have the option to backtrack and select all the things that I want and the things that I don't need. That's fine. All right, that's okay. So just delete that, and boom, we are back to having the proper size for that hole in here. All right, so that's better. I'm gonna save this thing before I do anything else. Now let's see if I can. Make this thing a bit different or a faster approach and basically select everything. Oh, that's okay. And then hold on to shit. 90 degrees. Move it in position. There we go, it snapped just perfect there. So what we do need to do though is uh, get rid of this middle one because we did kind of change the size of this thing so we're gonna have to delete it. Uh, select that thing, move it all the way to the end. Actually, you know what, we don't even need this because there's not gonna be a corner here, it's gonna go straight to the wall. So. What I do want to do is select this, select that one, select that one. And now when I move it, there is gonna be one, two, three copies and damn it. All right, we're gonna have to do a bit of a change. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, we can, yeah, no, it's this one. Really not very, very practical, but uh, we can fix this. It's an easy move. I'm just trying to get it so that the uh, size of this uh, door is more or less right. 
it's those small things that are easy to like fix that are not a problem. So move this thing over the back. Select that thing and put in two copies of this. So we're missing just one piece, but you know what? I think this thing is so small that we might not even have to put in anything in here. Unless there is a damn child that would like to jump off of it. Nah, man, don't worry about it. It's uh, basically I'm trying to put in... Oh, crap. This is an instance. Ah, I have to go for these. Move this thing back. I probably should have moved this thing back as well, but again, ah, damn it, whatever. Just, I hate when stuff like this, I miss out on stuff like this. So let's. The to-do list is not really a must-do because all of those little uh, screw-ups that we make while we work are going to be very, very visible when we start uh, doing the renders or start preparing the scene for rendering. That is where, where you see most of the issues pop up. Just for this, I'm actually gonna get one more of these and just put it in here, just for a good measure. There we go. Now no child can go through this thing. Unless it's a very, very stubborn child. In that case, I can just put something like this in there, but I really don't want to. All right, so for this, I'm going to just take one of these guys, drop it in. Now let's put one, two, three, two. All right, so we have some placeholders for that thing. Now, this I need to hide. I'm using the solar panel. I need to select everything. Hide, hide, hide. Crap. This thing was not supposed to be in the sliding door wall. What is inside that thing? Oh snap, did I miss out on something here? Ah, it's this thing. Are you gonna get deleted then? Now comes the interesting part where I can put something on the top here, something like the uh, 
sale that you guys uh, mentioned previously. For this top, so for that, I can actually use Marble's Designer. And before I do that though, here's another thing I want to do first. I'm gonna select one of the tops. Just select the top. Ah. Alright. So this is the thing. I'm gonna detach this as a clone. No. Why is this thing not selecting the thing that I just created? Ah, there it is. So go to center to center. And of course, this is not going to get centered. Because the pivot is all wrong. But it's cool. Then manually just move this thing and get that group. Alright. Now at least I have a group for that side of the building. Uh -huh. That's not a really bad idea. When you're modeling something that has an interior plus an exterior, uh, then it's a good idea to basically have a work, uh, working a scene that you do all of your assets in that is going to be separate from the one where you compile everything together. Otherwise, what I'm actually doing right here is not the optimum way of doing it. Like, uh, all the things that I'm doing in the stream right now, later on when we have everything finished, I'm going to take and, uh, and break down everything into one uh, very detailed and elaborate tutorial where everything is going to be broken down into very easy to uh, like uh, do parts and the way that I'm probably going to end up doing it is I'm going to model out all of the models separately and then put them together into one uh, scene which will be a good uh, show showcase on how to take your entire scene and how to compile it without getting a lot of uh, issues with the naming conventions because as I'm doing it right now, uh, if I would have to explain this way of working, I would say this is pretty much uh, a ninja approach towards modeling. You basically take everything, you, you try to squish it together and make it so it kind of works. Now the problem with this is that you're gonna have a lot of uh, elements that are gonna have weird names. Like for example, if I go here in my selection from the scene, I can see that these are kind of uh, okay when they're named because they uh, do, uh, do, do tell you that this is a bar chair or bar wall. But when you get down to here and you go like boxes or box 069, box, box cylinder, cylinder, line, object, plane, uh, this is generally a very, very bad naming convention. I wouldn't recommend doing it this way, but like I said, when I finish with this project and I have a clear idea of how this thing is going to end up uh, being like, I'm actually going to make this thing into a very detailed and easy to comprehend tutorial. So, yeah. So, I the way that I'm looking at these live streams is basically like the testing uh, grounds for that tutorial. I want to have, make sure that everything is going to be perfect. So when this thing is finished, it's going to be what people like to see. And it's going to be filled with uh, ways of working and explain things that people like to see. All right, so this is fine. 
I know for a fact that on this wall, I want to put something um, that is going to be like the plaque for uh, the name of this uh, bar. For this second floor here, I'm probably going to put something uh, to let some more light come in. But we'll see how that uh, how this thing looks like with the light once we get to that point. Because I don't know how much light can go through here, through these uh, windows. If we don't have enough light, I will probably put something more in here. Otherwise, I'm just going to leave it like this. And I'm going to have to find something to do about this piece here. And also, I'm going to have to find a way to incorporate a bathroom in here. So what I could do as well here, I'm not going to be the happiest camper if I have to do it that way, but uh, uh, Matt, I do freelance. But most of the time, I have worked with a company. Uh, David, at the moment, I'm doing it uh, like uh, free. Like I just select something and I move it where I want to put it at with like how it feels like. Otherwise, if I had to move this thing, uh, for example, if I want to move all of these tables uh, for a certain amount, then I would just select whatever it is that I would move, right click on the move uh, type and offset it in the world center. All right, so that's fine. Now for the bathroom, uh, what I did think about was to basically uh, right in here where these tables are I can put a wall in here and convert this thing into two bathrooms so one is for like guys the other one is for like girls so we could do that as well which might have might make some sense because I really do not want to add in one more container that is just gonna be for bathrooms like if I have to do that I'm not gonna be a happy camper Let's see if I select that thing and this is all the way up. So if I go and do this. Nah, this looks way too wrong. It's going to give my... Are a really, really, really weird look. Now this is this is not. Well, I'm I'm no architect. I can tell you that much. But all I can do is I'm looking at uh, things and trying to make it so it kind of looks logical. If it looks right, it's right. If it looks uh, bad, it's bad. It's simple as that. We're just trying to make it so it's uh, very uh, hmm, practical. So let's try it that way then. I'm going to... Mm -hmm. Do we remove two of these tables? So if we do that, we only have... Uh, have three tables in here which is going to be bad as well so no we're just going to do this i'm going to take uh one two tables so remove these four i probably could have just done this but damn it Let's select this one as well move these yeah. there we go Okay, so now what I can do is, first of all, let me just put in one simple uh, wall in here, so I at least know where my walls are going to be. Alright, so move this thing 
back. Oh, I see what I'm missing here. Oh, no problem, man. no problem. Just going to move this thing a bit to the back. To about there. And then move it upwards. So you get to the top, like that. And now another problem here that I'm seeing is that this piece is kind of lacking in size. Just move it like that. It's a quick cheat. Nothing too bad. There we go. And very, very slightly move this thing inwards. So it's no longer ca uh, clipping through our outer wall like that. That's fine. And again, move this thing to the back a bit, like that. I'm probably gonna put some uh, something for this corner in here as well. Just move this thing to the back like that for now. But like I said, I will. I want to have some uh, something for the interior wall, which is gonna make it so it kind of differentiates from the exterior. I don't want to have this uh, sort of a metal look on the inside as well. And so row twice and delete. Select that edge, move it inwards like that, it's fine. Hey Jeff, what's up? Yeah, man, keep on working. And Matt, uh, my work consists of modeling for everything. I'm a pretty much a 3D generalist. I've modeled things for uh, products, uh, for art, uh, art for games. So pretty much everything and anything. If it has to do, if it has a 3D in the name, I've probably done it. I've done uh, photogrammetry assets. I've done photogrammetry cleanup. So I've done uh, sculpting, game models, pretty much everything. All right, so now copy one more version. Yeah, uh, for uh, school wise, I, have, I am a mining engineer. I finished up. Mining engineer. So I've never uh, done architecture like school-wise. Most of the architecture, uh, like uh, experience I have, is for modeling stuff for Arctis. So yeah. All right. So we have. All right. There we go. And now the bar is finally closed up. This is okay. So now we have a place where we can put in our bathrooms. And for the bathrooms, what we can do is put in some, okay. Where's the beam that goes? Uh, Matt, it kind of uh, depends on, for example, if I had a blueprint to follow. Yeah, Liliashi, bring him in, uh, bring it on. Whatever you want to do, or like whatever uh, ideas you have, just drop them in i would love to hear your ideas and see how that thing goes uh matt uh like i said it really really depends on whether or not i'm following a blueprint like if i'm following uh some sort of a uh, an idea 
like some something that uh, somebody else already designed this is gonna go a lot faster uh, one thing that I know for a fact that I do quickly is model I can I'm pretty fast when it comes uh, comes down to modeling but when I have to like uh, think of how everything would work like what we are basically doing here or brainstorming some ideas about uh, how to place things and where to place them that kind of takes more uh, more time Uh, so copy that thing there as well. So put it there. So on the Z, I probably want to move this thing uniformly up. So let's try it with uh, 20. So this is where the uniform move comes really well because I want to move them both on the same size. So now we're going to move 20 up. There we go. This is also going to give us that uh, look for the structural stability of the building. Later when we start doing the actual renders for this thing. Uh, Jerson, yeah man, uh, this entire thing, the inspiration, came from a shipping container. Uh, like I've said in the, in the previous uh, streams, this whole thing started off with a simple idea that I wanted to create a simple uh, ship container house, but then it kind of blew into becoming a bigger shipping uh, container house, and then it slowly turned into what you're seeing here in a very big sh shipping container house, and then it turned into a bar, and then it turned into a nautical bar, and then we have this. But I think that we are at the point where we can no longer uh, just juggle around and get some different, uh, well, different ideas. We're pretty much set on the nautical bar. So I'm going to have to finish up this nautical bar scene. And later on, if we want to create something uh, else, like an actual house, that would be a different stream topic. But for now, we're stuck with this. That thing, oh, no, we are not needed. We do not want to have a big, really big window for our bar. Uh, Vasily, uh, no, it's not gonna be a game. This is gonna be uh, about creating for uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna end up being for visualization. We're gonna see how this thing is gonna look like, and if uh. Everything in the end works out. I might do a few streams where I actually go ahead and optimize some of these uh, uh, assets and put them into Unreal. And in there, we're gonna probably, if I'm gonna say if, I'm not saying I will, but if I go ahead and do this thing and put it into Unreal, then we're probably gonna be able to like uh, go inside uh, the thing move around walk around see how the thing is going to be basically make it game ready if i do that i'm i'm probably gonna hate my life for a bit because optimizing all of these assets is going to be uh, troublesome but yeah i might actually do that as well and kaiser hyatt uh the infrastructure is basically uh, taking up some of these containers, putting them around, and until we get something that looks okay. And hence, this is what we have so far. So everything that you're seeing here came directly when we were streaming. I'm not doing anything off stream, so whenever I'm not on uh, live, this project is basically frozen. I'm not touching this thing. 
So all of the reference gathering, all of the tweaking around, all of the screw ups is basically, well, on live. Ah, see, McDermott, ah, Sean, you just, you just walked into the thing that I just said that I, I do not know if I will be doing this, but if I do, well then, uh, basically, when it's finished. The, the thing about uh, doing it inside Unreal is that uh, when you make stuff for Unreal, you want to think in a different way. Basically, you're not thinking about creating all of these elements uh, individually and then just like copying them around. But instead, you want to think about when you would uh, like model for a game. So you basically make uh, things that can be used in a modular way. So you, you just make, for example, uh, what we just did here. We create one of the uh, uh, corners here for this uh, thing. And then we create another part for the mid, uh, mid part here. So we just did, do inside Unreal what we did here. But that would require unwrapping everything with proper UVs, uh, proper uh, normals, which takes quite a bit of time and then importing that thing as one asset. Uh, when it gets down to the actual uh, size of this thing, it's really not that complicated to come to think of it because all of these uh, really big containers, they're just copies of one of, uh, uh, from one another. So you can just import them in Unreal, place them in there, uh, hold on alt, just copy them around into the same shape. Or, if nothing else, just use Unreal Studio, get everything worked up uh, correctly in, uh, in here, and then just uh, drop it inside Unreal with the help of their import. Oh, dude, don't even uh, uh, worry about the conversion about low poly, because uh, stuff like this, like even this uh, piece right here, it has a lot of polygons. For example, this thing has 139 polygons. But if I open up this scene and then turn off the, for example, from four and a half thousand polygons in here, I turn off the turbo smooth, I get down to 600. Uh, I do the same thing over here, over here, over here. And very, very quickly, this thing uh, goes from being a very heavy uh, model to being nearly un uh, uh, Unreal uh, friendly. So like, for example, even these small uh, buttons, there are like two and a half, uh, two and a half, two thousand polygons. I can skip them, I can even bake them in here. So for example, we went from uh, all of that polygons to being down to 7,000 polygons. So not really that crazy because once you bake the, uh, once you unwrap this thing and then you bake down the uh, all of those uh, details to it, you're gonna get everything to look nice on that very small uh, poly budget. So seven thousand versus how much was it for everything? Yeah. So we we go down from one hundred and thirty nine thousands. We go down to 7,000. So it's really not going to be too much of an issue. Uh, no, here I haven't used any proxies. Here everything is uh, an instance or a copy, mainly instances. Copies are just for things that are going to be unique. But now that you guys got me riled up about putting this thing into Unreal. My brain is starting to process that idea and I like it. It could turn into an interesting way of doing things, but that might come after we are finished with the whole modeling phase. <sighs> why, 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 why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? That's going to take a lot of time but I might actually do it.
Uh, I'm gonna hate myself. All right, so let's. Ah, all right, whatever. That's fine. Uh, Kumar, I will do uh, the V-Ray passing, but I'm not sure if it's going to be on the stream or it's going to be in the tutorial phase because I can tell you for a fact that doing V-Ray testing on live stream can be a very, very, very frustrating thing. Ah, uh, dude, I I have no idea about animating characters. I do not do animation because when I tried to, to do animation, I started hating my computer and I started hating 3D and everything. So I will work a bit uh, with uh, rigging, but I will not do animation. No, animation and me don't don't mix well. Fine. That's fine as well. And the bridge. Clear all. All is smooth. Oh hell no. Clear all. Ten. There we go. Very sharp pages. That's fine. This is the 2017 versions of Mac, the version of Max. I do, do not, I'm not a really great fan of uh, 2017, but the problem with the newer versions is that some of the plugins that I use, they have issues with those versions, so no. Uh, for the Marvelous Designer for this project, uh, I'm not sure, man. There's not going to be a lot of uh, uh, cloth simulation for this. Maybe except just for the uh, sail cover here that I want to use because I do really do not like Max's uh, cloth simulation that they have. So let's see like this. More walls. It's fine. So in here the sale thing how many years of experience uh probably pushing 10 now i started off like what was it like 2007 2008 I mean, yeah but yeah. more or less yeah almost 10 years i guess so let's just quickly something in there now f just feel free and uh, ask whatever questions you have I don't mind uh, answering questions um, size that's right two fifty two and a half meters is all right. <laughs> Jeff, that's one of the things that I cannot show. 
about 80% of the stuff that I did, or even maybe more, is hiding me behind an NDA. So one of the worst things that I have to deal with is when I'm uh, applying for a project and they ask me for things that I've done to send them a showreel, I have to tell them that I cannot send them a showreel of things that I've done because they are behind an NDA. And every time I get a new client and they want me to do something that I consider it cool, I ask them if there is an NDA and if I can show them, uh, if I can show off what I've done for them, it's always the same question. No, you sign that NDA, you cannot show anything. So, uh, what the hell? Non-disclosure agreement, the bane of all 3D artists. Sean, like, very much. Sean, Sean, Sean. Yep, they make it impossible for you to have anything to show off. Layer of and bar layoffs. I've worked with companies all across the world. And uh, I've worked with uh, U.S. companies, European companies, Australian companies. And at the moment, I do freelance. And yeah. Dude, all of my uh, personal work that I d uh, I've done, I basically had a choice. Either make it so that I share stuff for people to learn on uh, places like YouTube or start making stuff that is going to be really cool and then put it on uh, stuff like ArtStation and get more people to hire you that way. So instead, I decided uh, to go with the YouTube approach. So like, what was it, like three or four years ago, I started this channel just so I can teach more people how to do this because I've actually held classes in an ATC. I've given classes at the university, at colleges and stuff like that. And one of the things that I noticed is that I loved when uh, I was teaching people new stuff. And it's always cool when people learn new stuff and they're happy about it. You can see enthusiasm at people. So it's, it's something that you have to uh, live it and experience it in order to know it. All right, so uh, with this, let me go and quickly check that sale. Why do you need to know character modeling to freelance them? That's a good question. So for these two. Uh, uh, 
Ilyashi, the thing here is with these poles, I'm actually just using these as a reference, just so I can see where uh, the end would be for this. These are not going to be the thing. These are just like uh, things to put in one. Uh, just so I know where this thing is supposed to end, like two meters from here. It's probably going to be dropping from here somewhere. And I'm going to find out something to use on this side because I don't like it to be flat like this. I'm going to have to uh, really, really uh, learn how to do this thing. I'm making the mapping channel up. Uh, Vasily, I have no idea how you can put one big UV mapping channel on clone objects in UE. I'm guessing UE4, not UE2. Uh, for this though, uh, honestly, I think that when it gets uh, to the outer as well, what I probably would like to do here is take one of these. What the hell? No, just, yeah, there you go. Probably use one of these really uh, massive. something like this to give us some sturdiness on this thing. All right, so this can be removed now. All right, let's put in one more on this side. And also, now that I actually got these two big poles on the outside, I'm going to give them a different color so I can see what the hell's going on. Yeah, once we have these, what we can actually do here is instead of going with a sail, hmm. What I can probably do here is make some sort of a. Let's, let's try it this way. I'm gonna have to change this really, really black color because it's really not allowing me to see anything else. It's gonna be blue. Whatever. Oh, wait. What the hell did I just change? No, you're not supposed to be blue. You're very white. We're supposed to be blue. All right now I can see where those guys are. HMLE or Simali or how do it's pronounced? All right, so move it up. Let's try this one. Then. The naming is still uh, still not finished. We'll see when we get to that point where we're gonna put the name for for a given. So far, it's still the bar. Uh, dude, I haven't had to go and look for uh, clients in a long time. So back in. When I was still looking, it was uh, sites like Odesk and uh, basically any other place. I'm gonna have to find something for this cap on the corners. I don't like it like this. Still missing something. Hmm. Oh, actually, when I'm looking at this thing right here, 
what I'm thinking is uh, use one of those uh, unfolding uh, roofs. So basically, take one of these guys. There. This should give us a bit more of a look all that sturdiness. But actually, you know what? This is a really good place to ask other people as well. So if anybody else is like uh, job hunting or knows some good sites on how to find some uh, works, just feel free and comment between yourselves. Share places where you get work or where you get hired. Ah, see, Hayashi, that's that's the thing though. Uh, when you're trying to uh, set your price, it kind of really depends on how much experience you have and how much you're willing to, uh, or what's the quality that you have as well. Let's not mix that one up. Because I've, I can tell you one thing, finding that sweet spot is always the hassle here. Because a client will always try to get you for as cheap as you can go. But that's the thing though, when you uh, undercut yourself too much, clients have a way of thinking that if they're paying way too cheap for you, you're not worth it. So, I don't like that one, I don't like, that one. I don't like this one either. It's too heavy for that. So you have to find that uh, median where they're happy with the price they're getting and you're happy with what you are getting paid. Uh, well, you see, if this is, like I said, it's a very, very dependent on what I have been uh, supplied with. But you see, Sean just gave you a, a pricing ballpoint. He he's basically has uh, set that ballpoint for him. So he knows that he's going to probably charge about 350 uh, exempt the tax per day. So if it takes him like two days to finish, it's going to be about 700 uh, euros. If it's less, it's probably going to be 350. If it if it takes him 10 days, he's going to probably charge three and a half K. So you get you get the idea. Just uh, if you're doing this thing as a freelance, do it the, the right way. Just uh, really quickly really quickly uh, do a simple math. How much do you need to make in order to cover up your uh, costs? And then how much are you making right now? If you're making more than uh, what your uh, needs are, then you're okay. If you're making less, you need to change something. So something like this would work, but I have to find a way how to Hello. This can be worked for something. Now I'm gonna have to revisit this uh, outer side for this side because at the moment I'm running out of ideas, but what I had in mind was uh, one of those uh, unfolding and folding covers for the entire roof. So it basically can have that skeleton and you press a button and this thing extends all the way up or if you press a button it extends all the way uh, to the end. So we're gonna see how that thing is gonna be around here. And if I'm gonna actually finish up with having this thing here like this.
Uh, both of them have their uh, priorities, and they both of them are not priorities, but uh, uh, positives and negatives. The working on a um, working in a company, the positives are that you get to meet a lot of people. Yeah, and when you meet a lot of people, you make friends, you learn new stuff from them, the way that they do stuff, and it can be a very, very fun experience. But the problem with companies is that uh, when they get into a crunch time, it's not really that uh, uh, fun or happy place to be. Because when you get to a crunch, it means you're crunching about 60 to 100 hours uh, 60 to 100 hours per, I don't know, a week. And that's not really fun to, thing to do. Plus, it's always the very, 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 very unrealistically short uh, dead, dead ends. Or deadlines on dead ends. Yeah, man, Europe is cheap. What can you do? But honestly, I love working with uh, people, so yeah. Yeah, man, I will. I will for the unfolding thing engineering. I will check it out on my own. I don't want to do it on the stream because me reading on stream is really not a that entertaining either for me or for anybody who's watching and I have to admit you guys have been really chatty today and I like it even the fact that we have less people than we usually have online where at the moment we have 21 people watching this live so I'm really enjoying the fact that you guys are asking so many questions and giving some uh, like answers here so let's have this thing now, what I want to do is uh, put in a door for the bathrooms. So let's just do it that way. Let's go like that. That, that. There you go. Now, at least I know where this bathroom is supposed to be at. Oh, yeah. Uh, what just Sean said, if you like to have time to chill, do not go into 3D uh, worlds because 3D means a way of living. If you go into 3D, that means whenever you go out and you see stuff, your brain goes into, ooh, I wonder how I get to do that thing in 3D. And then you start uh, seeing things in a different uh, light. You start uh, figuring out in your brain how to do that uh, substance or how to do that texture or how well that thing would be if you can make it into 3D. And then you, if you start to go in uh, and playing around with photogrammetry and you learn that everything that you can see, you can uh, snap some uh, photos of it, then do some cleanup and then you can uh, basically have that thing inside your scenes. Oh, you're going to go crazy. You're going to go out, you're going to take some pictures. And then uh, all of a sudden, like when you go out with friends and they're out partying or doing something and you see something very, very, very cool. But it's only cool for you because you know that you're looking at it in a different uh, way that they are. For example, you go out in a bar and then you see something really cool uh, hung up over on the uh, on the wall and you think wow the geometry of that thing is so amazing i love how that thing uh, is swiveled or uh, is how it's made and in that that is what's happening in your head but when people are looking at you from the side all it looks to them is like you are just gazing into the wall into one spot and not saying anything and they're going to think that you just lost your marbles and you're, you've gone crazy. But yeah. All right, let's go. 
let's see. Uh, interior architecture design. Uh, I've had a lot of people uh, that I've uh, taught 3ds Max, and most of them have been uh, from interior designers. And well, it's more of a well. I can tell you this way. Most of the people that have been uh, into architectural design for the interior design have been female. There, I said it. Most of them are female. And the way that females look at things is different from what men look. And uh, I don't know. I'm not one to say that uh, it's a very uh, sexist thing to do. But from experience and from what I've seen in real life, most of the interior designers have been women. Hey, Trunk. Uh, one, <laughs> come to think of this, uh, I had uh, a different, uh, well, here is a, the thing about the women and the men is on one of my previous projects that I've done, we did it with another, uh, with another co-worker so both him and me think the same uh, way like a very engineering and practical way of uh, work so we did everything so we did everything in there everything was very functional everything was very right until it came time to present it to a certain uh, client and the client did not like it they were like uh, we don't like this let's do something else so then they brought in a designer, interior designer, a female, a very, very good uh, interior designer. And she took our scene, did some really, really cool changes to it, like how to set certain uh, things around, how to make everything feel right. We did the changes to basically what she told us to do. And all of a sudden the client was overwhelmed happiness they were like oh my god this is what we want and yes so 3d modelers and 3d people we can be amazing at making other people's uh, ideas come to life but it doesn't have to mean that if you know 3d you, you're going to be an amazing uh, interior designer two different things Hmm. All right, so this thing, how big is this thing? Oh, you know what? I just come to think of it, I place these two here as a placeholders. So let's see if I could remove those two placeholders. Yes, Egon, I do intend to make the rendering and lighting and everything in, on this project. But like I said, uh, once I'm finished with the modeling phase, I will move on to doing the uh, texturing and lighting and everything. And this will be made into a tutorial. <laughs> uh, Jerson, I cannot say that thing uh, because YouTube will flag me. YouTube will flag me if I read that thing out loud.
happiness. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But that's the thing though, if, uh, if I read it out loud, YouTube will not care that you said it. They will flag this video as inappropriate for all audiences and basically mute it. Uh, one of the streams I got really uh, frustrated when Max crashed. I just dropped a single F-bomb when I was uh, really uh, pissed at that thing happening. And that was the very, very first time that I had YouTube flag one of my videos as inappropriate. Yeah, see, I'm not going to be dropping any offensive uh, language or whatsoever. I just want to make it so it's uh, it's a nice place for people to come in and learn something, you know. All right, so now let me go in here, select these three, and in here, drop in one plane. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. I have a really keen sense of humor. So I like when people are making uh, jokes. I just don't like it when people are being mean to each other. Like, believe it or not, I've had to delete a lot of comments on... I've had to delete a lot of comments on the YouTube channel where people were just like being mean to other people for asking questions. Um. Oh yeah, what just Sean said. Uh, I also mentioned that men and women have a different way of uh, seeing things. Men tend to have a more robust way of seeing things while women have a more um, feeling way of saying things so that they, they both have their strengths hence it's always good to, to hire people based on their strengths so if somebody is better at finding a certain uh, issue hire that guy all right so that's okay so I can use that thing as Bathroom wall. Yeah, see, I also agree with what Paul said. It kind of depends also if you have the talent. The talent can go uh, a certain uh, a certain distance, but you still need to have some uh, ideas as to what the, what you are doing, and having some uh, education in uh, design helps a lot as well. First of all, let me just hide the windows and doors. And of course, I'm gonna need the doors. No, all right. All right, so we have, uh, you know what? This actually does not look bad at all. And we even have this window for not window but the wall for the interior in here probably gonna have to cap some of these places why is this thing oh snap this thing is not snap so that's why you have that place Yeah, see, that's the same thing moving across on this side. 
probably should have been like that. But then, ah, I got it. Whatever. You know what? Nope. I'm gonna do it that way. I'll do it this way. I'm gonna cheat. up now? Yep, it is. Alright, I'm happy. Oh yeah. Uh, dude, uh, 10% is what you have as a talent. It's a God-given thing. Uh, uh, some people have it, some people have more of it, some people have less of it. The people that have less of it for a certain thing have more for of it for a different thing. Uh, another 10% is luck. Do never underestimate luck because you can do everything right and just have a stroke of uh, really, really crappy luck and you're going to miss out on everything. And the rest of the 80% is just like work, 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 work. And it's always the same. The best thing you can do is screw up and well when you screw up on something you learn you learn how not to screw up the second time because nobody likes screwing up but when you screw up the first time you learn something you screw up second time you learn something third time you learn something if you continue screwing up on the same thing well then you might be uh intelligent deficient because nobody's going to screw up more than three times in one thing but Every time you learn, yeah. All right, so. I, mm. All right, so, uh, Lil Yashi, you said that you do interior uh, design. All right, let's see how we can make this thing better. How do we get this thing to a point where it's gonna start looking nice? What do we need to add? And also, here's a question for everybody. Uh, what should we do for the second floor? What sort of a second floor should we have? Do we need? Do we want to have uh, some tables up here? Do we want to have a game room? Do we have, want to have? What do we want to have? How do we make the second floor? Entertainment area, all right, that's one. Couches and, ah, dude, it's a boat. Keep that in mind, it's supposed to be a nautical bar. So not a lot of couches and yeah. See, see that thing, dance floor with funky lightings. That that's that's a, that's a no. No funky lightings in a boat. No. How do you put a swimming pool inside? Come on, practical ideas. <laughs> Engine room. <laughs> Oh, man. It's supposed to have that uh, feel of a um, boat, not be an actual boat. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to do this thing first then. I'm, I want to have some nice uh, windows here as well. So let's going to this first. So I go and do a two meters of use. And 
Y. Oh, it's playing high. Oh, the skylight idea is not a bad idea. Lil Yashi, that's a really good idea. Especially that uh, wheel, the steering wheel. And that's a, actually a very, very uh, good idea. It's simple to make. Jerson, uh, about the thing with the lighter materials, I would generally agree with you, but when I uh, basically model stuff, the way that I do it is uh, every time I'm finished with something, and I know that for a fact that I'm not going to be uh, changing anything to it, or just so I know that I've done it, I put a gray material on it. And when I need to do something to it, I put a light material. So you can see all of the uh, green uh, elements in here that are like really uh, easy to notice, they're placeholders. So that means I have to put in something in there. Everything that's gray, it's more or less have been uh, worked on. Hence uh, all the grayness and the, the gloomy look of our entire scene. But I did like the... Oh. This thing is really scaring the crap out of me whenever, every time I stream and somebody like follows me on Twitter, not on Twitter, but uh, Twitch, it's, it's kind of weird because I think that uh, the Streamlabs OBS thing is picking up, is picking up the feedback from uh, Twitch and I'm streaming on YouTube, which is really weird. Steering wheels, and up there, well, lucky nearly so. Oh, dude, uh, Liyashi, if you have any, uh, anything like a link to anything, I would love to see that. Thing. Sean McDermott, what, dude, why do I, why do I know your name from somewhere? Have you done any videos on YouTube? It really, really resonates with me with your name. It might be one of those things, but still. You done? Can you leave a link so I can see wh where they are? Because your name really sounds one of those names that kind of like stuck back in the back of my head. I know that I've probably watched some of your stuff uh here's the thing though if 
any of you wants to leave a link to something and uh, YouTube doesn't allow you, just go over to the Discord uh, server and drop it in there. So Sean, you haven't done uh, any like 3D tutorials and stuff like that? Yeah, see, here's the uh, Discord channel. Just go over to the streaming related. I mean, here you can just uh, drop in some of the stuff. So just like uh, Ilona Flory did here. Ah, well then. Jump in here and this is more or less where you can share your ideas. Uh, if you find something that's cool and... Uh, oh, hey, goodbye, Vasily. It was nice to have you, man. Hope to see you next time. Drop in here, leave, a, leave your link. I will check it out right away. And if you have any ideas for future uh, like uh, streams, feel free and drop them in there as well. There we go. I think that's the uh, info. Yeah, the info is in the stream uh, information about the Discord. What was I gonna do here? Ah, yeah. We are doing edit poly. Hey Chris, <laughs> uh, why do I get the feeling that I've chosen a really crappy time for people to catch me when I'm live? I'm really uh, glad you guys are liking it. And then this like what's not needed. All right, that's fine. Ah, damn it! Well, here's a question for you guys then. If this is a crappy time to stream, what time would be an okay time to stream uh, that would fit you guys? Yeah, Sean, it's a pretty good chance, man. I'm actually gonna grab your co uh, contacts and talk to you uh, after this. Uh, uh, after this uh, stream is finished, if you want, so feel free and drop me a message up on uh, Discord. And here's another thing that I'm actually uh, cool with, the fact that People are actually liking the stream. Oh, did it? 
All right. Oh, this is a nice. Oh, okay. You probably really, really hate me then. You just dropped one of those. <sighs> oh, no, 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 no. Don't get rid of me. Oh, you see? <laughs> I hate these. I hate mommy bees. The ones that are the ones that are actually made out of rope. What is this? Wants to show nothing. No, no, you're not gonna show no notifications. This I like. This I like. This I can work with. Actually, I, I do. Well, who knew that? I actually do have Pinterest. All right. Yeah, but this is actually quite really cool because it has a lot of uh, things in here, you know. Uh, we can choose some of the stuff like for this is definitely going to be. Oh, I'm going to save it right now. I just put it on the, the portfolio ideas, nautical bar, and in here, put. Interior memorabilia. All right, so this is gonna be what? Yeah. Kudos to Yashi for this one. So that was a cool. Idea to add. Another one that I just saw, but it's trying to get away from me, is this one. I like how this thing is made. <laughs> this is going to be interesting to create as well. And yeah, this is easy to create. The connections here are going to be raise this out with the cutting thing yeah I know uh, I've seen this uh, string art uh, they've actually done qu uh, quite a bit of uh, complex shapes like even they've done faces and, and a lot of cool stuff so I can actually use this so let's go hard I'm not gonna do a boat. No. Oh, anchor. Hello. Yeah, I can see this. Anchor. All right. Yeah, you did. But then again, I'm not a big image guy. Let's see. This. Mm, why not? Save image. Anchor two. some more things that we can use this is great I can actually make all of these uh, elements you know uh, in a modeling uh, in one modeling stream just like get oh hello uh, this is a cool one I like this one Buy this for 42 bucks. Weird. Oh, 
Oh, dude, look at this. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, this is going to be amazing. I like these lamps. Oh, wow. All right, so definitely today, Bilyashi is a man of the hour, or the woman of the hour, or the man of the match, person of the match. Here's something for the bathroom. All right, definitely. All right, this, haha, <laughs> yes. Say hello to the bathroom. All right, you, you're coming as well. I like the fact that we have that rope uh, idea going everywhere. Oh yeah, oh yeah, hello. Oh no, 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 not gonna do this thing, no, no. I, I am really against that thing. I hate modeling those uh, weaves. What is this? That's a weird chair. Oh, dude, I'm gonna enjoy this. This is a shitty idea. No, I don't like that one. Okay, so basically, I got some of the stuff that I need. This would be an amazing little detail, but in the grandeur of our projects, we're really not going to be seen. But this, oh, hello. Once I start really hating on my life, I'm going to start modeling this, but not on this project. It's going to take quite a bit of uh, detailing and sculpting and stuff like that. I do not want to get that thing on my head, hands as well, especially since you guys managed to get, oh, hello. You guys managed to get me to th start thinking about Unreal. So, hello to you too as well. So, look at this thing as a bench. A wand. And, oh, 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 hello. Bench or two. I think we just got us some uh, benches for the second floor or not the second floor but the actual i want to put those things up here so instead of having a uh, very simple like what we have uh well, not very simple but instead of having those things uh, down here i want to put those uh up here so we can have some benches in here have some seating arrangements and yes Hyatt, i'm gonna have all of those uh, everything that you see here Everything that I'm really happy about, I'm going to make it so that it's uh, on stream. Unless it's it's something that will take more time, but if it's something like that, I'm going to make a tutorial, put it on YouTube, and then just use that thing. Uh... Hey, Fion, what up, dude? Your dad is an amazing guy. 
always remember that for somebody to stay here for 20 something years and still do this this thing he's a very very good man be proud of your dad so fian mcdermott your dad sean mcdermott is amazing know that all right now we need a table for this all right so all right before we finish this stream we have this thing that we're going to model so what do you guys think about this uh what do you what do you guys think about this table do we take this one or do we take something like this actually i know i'm going to take this one because this i can reuse so yeah why not so save this thing Table. Tabletop. Oh, yeah. All of you guys have been amazing today. This is great. So, all right. So, since uh, I'm almost out of time, not almost out of time, but it's where the stream usually ends, I'm going to leave this thing for, so to continue on next stream. And it's probably going to end up being uh, on Tuesday. I might usually, I might do another uh, stream on Saturday, but this week I have a wedding I have to attend to. So I'm definitely not gonna be uh, available to do anything on uh, Saturday. Uh, I would like to thank everybody that was uh, on this stream today. This was amazing. I think this was the most fun I've had on a stream so far. You guys have been uh, really amazing. Sean has been amazing. Uh, Lil Yashi has been amazing with uh, his ideas about the Pinterest. I would love to see you guys uh, with me next stream. And generally, everybody that was with me today have been amazing. So thank you very much for watching. And like I said, come over on the Discord channel. Inside in here, you're gonna see uh the hallway which is basically where you land and every time you, you go down to the streaming related just drop in here any ideas that you might have or anything that you would like me to maybe add to our stream and yeah paul looking forward to having uh, the next stream as well so hopefully you guys uh with me again and i guess that would be it for today and yeah more or less that that's it anyways thank you guys and i will see you all next stream bye 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 now